So much so, I wrote an article. It's my article that's been up on the big board today. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it. If you haven't, I'm going to read it for you because it's really important. It's not boring, I promise. I am quite entertaining. Okay, are you being served? Complaints against banks go unheard by independent committee. In approximately three weeks, a private member's bill submitted by independent MP Andrew Wilkie will be presented to the Parliament. The bill, known as the Banking Amendment Bill, Banking Code of Conduct, requests the Australian Government to make it mandatory for all banks conducting business in Australia to adhere to a set of rules governing their behaviour towards individuals and small businesses, with breaches of this new code allowing APRA to name and shame the banks publicly and sanctioning fines for grievous or continuous breaches of the code. New code? That would mean there's a current code. So what's wrong with the current code and why do we need to change it? Glad you asked. <laughs> because if you have a bank account with a bank in Australia, it affects you. If you have a credit card, car loan, home loan, overdraft with a bank in Australia, it affects you. If you are a small business in Australia, it affects you. It goes a little something like this. The 1980s, systematic deregulation of the banks and then a recession. 1991, a report known as the Martin Report was submitted to Parliament. This report was an investigation into the behaviour of banks, specifically to establish a formal, self, uh, formal system of self-regulation based on a government approved set of codes. It further raised the issue of the high costs associated when there was a legal dispute between a customer and banks, as customers were forced to fight them in the courts. Banks, as we have all seen, have an amazing amount of money and legal expertise at their fingers. Yeah. Individuals, yeah. small businesses, yeah. including farmers, do not. The playing field here was more like a black run in the ski fields of Switzerland than the level cricket pitch it's meant to be. Thus, one of the recommendations laid down in the Martin Report was to correct this and allow any and all complaints to go through an independent body where a fair investigation would be conducted and decisions would be made without forcing people to go through the costly legal system. However, instead of the government taking this on board and making it mandatory, the banks turned around and went, hey, don't worry, it's all good. You don't need to look at what we're doing. We, we got this. We'll take care of it. And so they did. They came up with a list of behaviours to adhere to, with hardly any of these aligning with the recommendations of the Martin Report. And they called it the Banking Code of Practice 1993. It took two years for it to be written, and another three years for the code to be adopted in 1998. And even then it was a voluntary code, which meant that APRA, the regulatory body, Australian government, didn't actually even have to monitor what they were doing. They only have to regulate mandatory codes. To date, 16 banks have signed up to it, including the Big Four and AMP and Citigroup, each of them adopting only the parts of the code that they want to. The early terms were very simple that banks would adhere to the terms within the code and that any and all complaints would be investigated. In May 2000, the Australian Banking Association appointed Richard Viney to conduct a new review of the code with industry, government and consumer advocacy groups. This happened at the same time the Minister of Financial Service and Regulation, Joe Hockey, was pushing for an increased level of self-regulation to occur within the financial industry. The updated recommendations submitted were that small businesses would now be protected under this code, that a principle of fairness would be added, and I quote, requiring banks to deal fair and reasonably towards you in a consistent and ethical manner, and that a new, separate and independent monitoring committee should be established to investigate these breaches of the code. This group, created in 2004, was, is, known as the Co-Compliance Monitoring Committee, or CCMC, and was, is, 
selected by, appointed by, and funded by the banks. An independent monitoring committee, let me say again, selected by, appointed by, and funded by the banks. This is how it still stands. This, however, this report that, that showed they had to do new things, then prompted the banks to actually reconsider the terms of the code itself to make sure that they wouldn't get caught. And in 2003, Gail Kelly, who was then the St. George CEO, who is now the Westpac, one of the big four banks CEOs, and John McFarlane, who was the ANZ CEO, presented the updating banking code of practice. 2003. The loopholes snuck into this new code of 2003 were such that no longer would the CCMC be able to investigate any and all complaints, but they, they, were, but they were restricted to levels unimaginable. This is because shortly after the terms of the code were changed, a secondary contract was put in place by a group known as the CCMCA Association. And the people within the CCMCA are, well, no one knows for sure, because it is an undisclosed body. However, it has been said to be pure cartel, containing only bank CEOs. Only bank CEOs. This contract placed on the committee, the monitors, to be able to do their job, was placed over the behaviour and operational activity of their roles. The systematic gutting of the rules surrounding the terms of investigation have been so successful for the banks that since 2003, approximately 2.5 million Australians have complained and these complaints have been lodged, with 250 being investigated, totally. There's a graph up on there, actually, you can see it here, and it doesn't matter that you can't see the second colour because that actually shows what 2.5 million compared to 250 actually looks like. It's nothing. Did the banks know that what they were doing when they changed the code wording, inserted their own terms upon their funded and appointed independent monitoring committee to monitor the very people who were telling them what they could monitor in the first place? Or this goes further than the often cited phrase of police investigating police. This is more like a police officer charged with a crime investigating himself based upon his decision as to what he's allowed to investigate and what constitutes as evidence. This bill being put forward by Andrew Wilkie will end the CCMC and CCMCA's reign as we know it requiring all code breach complaints to be investigated by APRA, already set up to regulate the banking sector. It's not perfect, and for the record, I'm not politically affiliated with any fuckers. It's not perfect, but it's a damn sight better than having only three people nationwide who are appointed by the banks, responsible for the investigation of all consumer bank complaints. It would not only penalise the banks both financially and legislatively and allow APRA to name and shame, but it would provide a level of transparency not seen before in the Australian banking system. When Andrew Wilkie announced his bill in August this year, it took only milliseconds for the ABA to reject his suggestions that the current banking code of practice and the CCMC were toothless tigers and that the banks believed the current format was fair and equitable. The ABA also suggested, or threatened, that additional layers of regulation make it more risky and more expensive to lend to small business. More expensive, more risky, perhaps, but expensive and risky has been in the lap of the consumer far too long due to the lack of independence and the forcing of complainants to have to go through the legal system against the bank's army of lawyers to get any sort of justice. The cash rate of the Reserve Bank has been slashed constantly over the past year, allowing the borrowing costs of banks to actually go down, especially when the full rate cut is failed to be passed on to people like you and me. By not passing on the most recent rate cut in October, the banks are making an additional $6.2 million 
a day. This is at a time when record profits have been packed by banks, reaching 24 billion between the big four in 2010-11. More expensive? I believe they can afford it. You could say that the extra $6.2 million that they are making off us is currently being spent on the army of lawyers who are needed to fight struggling small businesses, farmers and individuals in the court. And of course on a constant badge of wonderful, if not misleading, deceptive PR marketing initiatives. The current state of affairs deserves no less than a Royal Commission into the corrupt, misleading and deceptive behaviour and intrusion of the bank CEOs into a supposed independent complaints procedures designed to protect the majority of Australian citizens. I am therefore asking everybody, and this is the important bit, because none of that was important, I am therefore asking everybody associated with Occupy around Australia, the banking advocacy groups, the consumer protection groups, to contact your local MP, media, Facebook, radio, newspaper outlet to give this bill and the idea oxygen so that the banks can finally be held accountable for this ongoing mistreatment of the Australian public. Thank you.